Good morning. Welcome to Maysville this morning. If you want, go ahead and open up your song books, number 419. That'll be our opening song this morning, 419. If you're visiting with us, we're delighted to have you with us and hope you'll have a chance to stick around afterwards so we can uh, have an opportunity to meet you and make you feel welcome here. If you are visiting, if you don't mind filling out one of the blue cards on the pew backs in front of you, uh, pass those towards the center aisles and our ushers will come down in just a few moments to collect those so that we can have a record of your attendance with us. Uh, several announcements to go through this morning. Uh, I think most of us are aware of David Robinson had his surgery this past Thursday. Uh, he has been moved to a regular room. He's still recovering, obviously. Uh, we think that he'll be able to possibly come back home uh, sometime midweek this week. And uh, we are also still requesting, as mentioned this past Wednesday, uh, if you've got a couple of baby gates uh, to prevent babies from, from going areas. Actually, it's for David's dogs. So uh, if you've got a couple of baby gates, uh, see Mike Banholzer afterwards this morning and um, uh, get with him and he will uh, assist with the baby gate. Also, we mentioned uh, Mike Kilpatrick. Um, latest update we had on him was that he still had to be put back on a, vent a ventilator uh, this past week due to a buildup of CO2 in his body. Uh, so please keep Mike Kilpatrick in our prayers right now. We also mentioned uh, Ron Wisnant's sister-in-law. Uh, she passed away this past week for, um, for reasons that were unknown. Uh, they asked for prayers for the family as they had to travel to Arizona for the funeral. So please keep uh, their family in our prayers and uh, for the traveling also. Shirley Shepard, she is in the emergency room. Um, has actually, uh, I think she's been moved to a room though right now. Uh, blood clot that was in her leg. So please keep Shirley Shepard in our prayers also. Uh, Eugene Renfro, husband of Edna Renfro, suffered a fall this past week and had some uh, broken ribs. Uh, so let's keep uh, these individuals on our, our minds and our hearts right now and lift our prayers up to them and remember their families also. Have some uh, upcoming events. Uh, elders and deacons meeting, by the way, will meet uh, today at 3.30 p.m. Elders and deacons at 3.30. Also, there'll be a teen devo tonight at uh, Andrew and Julia Gary's home uh, and you're asked to bring drinks and desserts and directions will be on the table in the foyer tonight uh, if you need to know uh, how to get there again that's at Andrew and Julia's home Teen Devo. There will also be a come and go baby shower for Holly Pendergraf on October 21st uh, from 2 to 4 p.m. and she is registered at Babies R Us and they are expecting a boy. Also, um, we'll have some more details, I'm sure, on this as we uh, progress this month. But October 20th will be the Ladies' Day, and that, the breakfast will be at 9 a.m. here. And you're asked to bring your favorite breakfast food. Again, that's Ladies' Day on October 20th. Also have a card this morning, the Maysville Church of Christ. We're truly thankful for the prayers, calls, and visits, cards, food, flowers, and all the kindness shown to our family during the illness and death of our mother. It's times like this that we realize how important your friends and family truly are, the Beulah Parton family. I believe that is all the announcements I have this morning. Again, opening song number 419. We'll have our closing prayer after our worship this morning by Brother Wayne Marshall. Let's all join together. Brother uh, Pat Bradford will have us in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Father, we come to you today thanking you for the blessings that you give us, the blessings that you shower on us each day, the air, the sunshine, the rain, the things that make our life pleasant. Father, we thank you for the blessings of healing that, have been, that you've showered down upon us on those that have been mentioned today. Father, we particularly thank you for the good report on Brother David Robinson. Father, please help him to continue recovering and bless all the, all the others that were mentioned today. Father, hold them in the palm of your hand, heal them, bless those that are taking care of them, bless their families and comfort them. Bless the bereaved, Father, those who have suffered losses in their family. Give them your comfort as only you can, Father. And Father, help us to be the ones that are instruments of your peace, that we may help those who are suffering, who are in need, that they may see your love through our work and that 
we may fade into the background so that they say only you. Father, we ask that you bless us this day in this hour of worship. May we raise our voices in praise that is acceptable to you. Bless the speaker that he may deliver the words of life to us, that we may honor you always in our hearts. Father, keep us always in your care. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we come before.
Number 452. 452, we now take our minds back to the cross and think about Jesus and what he did for us there. Realizing he gave himself fully for us for our salvation. We remember that by singing and also by the supper we're about to partake of. We'll do the first and the last of this, please. <clears throat> Nine with ebon pinion Threaded o'er the veil All around was silent Save the night wind's wail When Christ the man Father in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come at this time in appreciation of what you have done for us, your plan for us. And it is at this time we remember the sacrifice made for us. We pray that as we take of this loaf, which represents Christ's body on Calvary's cross, that each of us will examine ourselves in humility and realize the great thing that has been done for us. All these things we do pray in Christ's name. Amen.
Bow with me, please. Father in heaven, we continue our thanks. Father, we are so indeed thankful for the sacrifice that was made for the giving of your son. Father, for the blood that was shed that would wash away our sins. We pray that as we partake of it, that we examine ourselves and take of it in a manner that's worthy in thy sight. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Number 434, 434, we now move to an opportunity to give back to God this morning. This song is More Holiness Give Me is the title of it. And, you know, holiness um, involves a number of things as a Christian. I think it also involves, <clears throat> again, uh, our material things that we have, our view of them and how we use them. Uh, we are to be a benevolent person as a Christian, and benevolence is seen in the Good Samaritan story and in other places in the New Testament, for example. But God instructs us to be, again, mindful of what we have and use it properly. The second verse talks about more gratitude give me, again, for what we have, and more trust in the Lord that he'll give us the opportunities to use what he's given us for his cause. Let's sing the second and third stanzas, please. <clears throat> more gratitude give Yeah. 
Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we give you our thanks for every blessing you provide for us, both spiritual and material blessings. We turn our thoughts at this time to the needs of others, the needs of our church. We pray that everyone this morning will open their hearts and give generously, and that you will bless our offering. And we thank you for the opportunity to give back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. song after the lesson will be number 106 number 106 um, we'll make it 107 I'm sorry across the page there 107 <clears throat> and now number 300 number 300 I know we have several different people sometimes uh, joining us wherever they are at home or in the hospital online and we appreciate uh, them tuning in. I understand David may be with us uh, in spirit uh, as he's in Nashville this morning so we say hi to you David if you're, if you're wa watching in joining our worship this morning. Number 300 and we'll ask you to stand and we'll sing this together please. <clears throat> I will sing of my Redeemer and his Son of God with him to be 
I'd like to introduce our speaker this morning. Cuthbert Cumberbatch is with us. He's our minister at uh, the Mount Lily Congregation in Nevis, West Indies. And most of you have already had an opportunity to meet Cuthbert and his wife, Allison. Uh, they've been with us since uh, Wednesday of last week. And um, well, Cuthbert's been the minister uh, down there for about 14 years. Of course, we've supported that work for quite a long time, se several decades and the work continues to grow and be successful and um, Cuthbert and Allison uh, they've been married for 23 years they have two sons uh, Timothy and Andrew uh, Timothy's 19 Andrew's 17 uh, so they're fixing to approach the empty nest era like we're in now I keep telling them it's not that bad um, so um, it's been a joy to have them here with us uh, we spent quite a bit of time with them, getting to know them, uh, wonderful people, and uh, uh, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Cuthbert Cumberbatch. Start with the scripture reading, Greg, that? Sure. Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from 1 Kings chapter 10. And we shall be reading verses 1 to 7. And it's good to be with you this morning. We trust we'll have a good worship. Now this morning, I will spend some time with the PowerPoint presentation, um, which was prepared by my son. I've never done a PowerPoint presentation, my son Timothy. Um, the contents, of course, is mine, but just putting it um, together, and then we will spend a few minutes exhorting from the Word of God. So 1 Kings chapter 10, verses 1 to 7. And I shall try to read slowly so you can understand um, what I am saying. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a great train, with camels that bear spices, and very much gold, and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent, by which he went up into the house of the Lord. There was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not the words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it, and behold, the half was not told me thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame which I heard these are the words of the Lord Who's operating? okay you can join it okay thank you go ahead 
So we're going to do a slide presentation of the work on Nevis, the Mount Lily Church of Christ. That's our sign leading to the building. Mount Lily Church of Christ, as you can see, is a small congregation, about 25 members. And of course, over the years, we've had members to leave for various reasons. It's one of two congregations on the island, the other being the Government Road Church in Charlestown, the capital. That's my family, myself, my wife, Allison, and our boys, Timothy and Andrew. We see what the challenges of the congregation and the work. All congregations face challenges. And of course, in Mount Lily, we have had the challenge of the congregation in terms of the building. We wanted to construct a new building because the present building, the land on which it is located, does not belong to the church. And of course, efforts over the years to try to acquire the land has full, uh, proven sorry, futile. So in 2009, we began the construction of a new building. This is when we first broke ground on the new location. This is part of the construction in progress. That's some of our members um, providing labor in relation to the construction of the building. one of the sides of the building. And this is what the building looks at presently, although this is an old picture. The grass is cut um, a little flatter at this time. The next time we work on the building would be to place the roof on um, the building. This is our present building. And it's some 20 something odd years. And we do not, we own the building, but we don't own the land on which the building is located. With it. Okay. We can just pass it and we'll have to take the time to get it. You think you can get it? Okay, this is a view of the inside of our present building. And on one Sunday morning we have had to shift our chairs because we had a lot of rain coming um, through the roof. Uh, sometimes when we have um, special uh, meetings or events, we'd have to place like a tarpaulin or some plastic on some segments of the roof. Last year, 2011, when the Chase Park brethren brought down their VBS team and their three nights of revival, this is what we had to do to keep out some of the water on that section of the building. This is the access road, and you can see the building is in the distance. This again is our, the present building as it is. And of course, the new building is located near to the main road. Go ahead. Okay, to date we have spent over 75,000 US dollars, of which the Maysville Church has contributed US 55,000. Dollars, of course, we have had contributions from other churches and individuals.
in the construction of the building, we have tried as best we can to be prudent, utilizing the funds that we have, duty-free concessions, discounts, free labor from the members of the church, that is the men, and the plumbing services were freely donated by Brother Hicks, who was one of the persons that I baptized in my time being there is a plumber by profession and has donated all of his services for free. Of course, the local church will continue to make attempts to raise funds, funds sorry, and to try to put the roof um, on the building. As you can see on the board, it's costing us about 74,000 US to put the roof on. At present, we have 43,000 US dollars, and we would be grateful if the church here at Maysville can assist us in doing so. Unfortunately, the church, the elders, have agreed to assist us further in another 31,000 US dollars, which would enable us to begin putting the roof on the new building. We hope also to get our members to contribute a window, a door, a toilet set, and of course contribute in other areas. And so over the last past three years, we have established a special contribution towards our building. And we have given consecutively over the three years um, more than the amount of the goal, as you would see on the board. These are some of our activities, our annual prison visit, which is held annually on Super Sunday. And that has been going on the 14 years I've been there and prior to that, where we visit the prisoners, um, have a devotion with them, have a meal with them, play dominoes, play cricket, play basketball, give chats, and generally talk to them. Our annual family and focus workshop is another annual event which we focus on the family. Our ladies fellowship is also an annual event. Health walk, special contribution, the goal of EC, $2,000. This year we visited the St. George's home and contributed toiletries and other supplies, had a devotion there. We are also planning to give a donation to school for children with special needs. And also we plan to invite the police in our area to worship and also to host a luncheon of appreciation. The church and Mount Lily, of course, are involved in revivals. Monthly evangelism, which includes track distribution, talking to people, trying to set up Bible studies, quarterly visit to the hospital, and of course donation to three students who are graduating from elementary schools, from two schools in our area, one of which I am the chaplain. Last year, 2011, we had the Chase Park Youth Group to come and to host a VBS. We had at the end of the VBS 102 children, and there was a group of 17. We're still awaiting the Maysville Church to send us a group of young people to host a VBS. There's about Andrew Lamika and some of the others. Nevis is um, filled with monkeys, thousands of monkeys and donkeys, and you see two there. That's inside our building, VBS. Sunday outside. That's at the Golden Rock Hotel where most of the, team, the teams that come would stay. And it's in the mountains and it's filled with monkeys. I want to express our gratitude to the Maysville Church who have afforded us the opportunity to work in Nevis. And whilst we have not baptized many people in that time, we have baptized some good people. Uh, Greg Phillip has a degree in finance, but that's not the major part of it. I was visiting with Greg's cousin one Saturday, and Greg confronted me and began asking a question. And then he asked if he could be baptized there and then. And then I said yes. And he said, two of us alone? I said yes. 
And so I invited them to worship the next day, Sunday. He attended the worship and was baptized later that morning in his church clothes and has been with us 13 years. While I'm away this morning, he is um, preaching, doing our sermon this morning and has been very faithful over the years. So we are grateful. And also the Memorial Park Way Church, now the Chase Park Congregation, have assisted us over the years with our church bus, with the purchase of the church's land, and have sent mission trips on at least three occasions. On the post, I express my gratitude to Brother Carey, who served prior to Brother Steve Harless. And Steve has just picked it up and have run. Brother Jerry um, Kilpatrick, who's over at Trace Park, and Brother Jim Long, who served at the Maysville Church here um, many years um, ago. Also, Brother Curtis Hill, who's one of the elders over at the Trace Park Church. And so we continue to ask and solicit contributions as a congregation or as individuals if you are interested in making a one-time contribution we'll be grateful you could do that at the Maysville Church attention brother Steve Harless yes. and also you can contact me personally Mount Lily, Charlestown, Nevis and my contact numbers are on the board as well as my email It, is it? It is? Yeah. <clears throat> I want to thank you very much for taking the time to listen and we shall use the remaining minutes to talk a bit and share from the word of God. Earlier we looked at First Kings chapter 10 verses 1 to 7, and I want to use this to speak to you on a topic, positive proof. And to say to you as we begin that the Queen of Sheba, upon hearing of the greatness and the renown and the wisdom of Solomon did not just accept it on face value, but I believe that she was curious. I believe that she was interested to know, to have a face-to-face -face with Solomon and to see if the things that she heard were exactly so. And this attitude of hers, there certainly is nothing wrong with wanting to see Proof. Very often we go about our lives and not seeking proof. And many of us have erred and have made mistakes in our lives, in our marriages, in our financial transactions, in our daily social relationships, simply because we did not seek proof. In our daily transactions, proof is always required. For example, in the court of law, the proof is referred to as evidence is required. In our financial and business transactions, there is a requirement of proof. They may require an ID. They may want to see some other kind of paper that provides proof or evidence. And brethren, this morning, nothing beats real evidence. Nothing beats real proof. To have evidence is better than hearsay. And the Queen of Sheba 
did not accept the hearsay. She wanted proof. She wanted to see and hear it for herself. I want to suggest to you this morning that we must become a people who demand more proof in what we hear or what we are told or even sometimes what we read, especially in regard to the internet because all kinds of things are written on the internet. The Bible tells us in 1 Kings chapter 10 and verse 1 that when the queen of Sheba heard, Hearing is something that we must pay attention to. While we must be swift to hear, we have to give consideration as to what we hear and even sometimes how we hear and from whom we hear. And so she heard it, but didn't just accept it. She wanted Proof. And so we are told that she came to Solomon to prove him, to test him, to try him with difficult questions. And sometimes you must ask the difficult questions. And don't be afraid to ask the difficult questions. Now I know Sometimes when we are asking questions so that we can make a better determination. Some people do not like that. They think we are too curious. We are too nosy. We are asking too many questions. But I want to say to you, questions you must ask. Some of our young people who are contemplating marriage, contemplating a lifelong relationship, it is important that you separate your emotions and ask the difficult questions. And don't wait till later when you have made the mistake. Asking difficult questions is important. In First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 21, the scripture tells us that we must prove all things. Prove all things and hold fast to that, which is good. So if you have tested it, you have tried it, and you have seen the difference, you have seen the evil and the good, the scripture says that you must hold to the good. But I also want to add that that is easier said than done. Amen? I know you don't say amen much here, but you can say amen. It is easier said than done because the Apostle Paul had the same struggle. The Apostle Paul said, when I wanted to do good, I found that evil was with me. And so it is a struggle, not just for our young people, not just for preachers, but for all of us. It is not that we don't know good from evil, but it is, a, it, is, it is a struggle, sorry. We find great difficulty in proceeding and doing that, which is good. Sometimes we find it easier to do the evil than the good. There's an example in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 17 and verse 11 and 12. The scripture tells us that they came to Berea, went into the synagogue in verse 10, Acts 17, and these were more noble, that is the brethren at Berea, than the Thessalonians, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. We are so distracted now by so many of the blessings, and listen to me, that God has given to us. 
And in spite of the fact that we have Kindle and we have our computer and we have our laptops and the iPads and our cell phones, for many of us, we are not searching the word as readily as we should to see whether these things are so or not. And it is essential that we do. It is important that we do because we are faced with challenges every day of our lives as Christians in every aspect of our lives. And even religiously, spiritually, false teaching, it is vital that we study the Word of God to prove or not whether those things are so or not. And so, two areas quickly. One, we must prove our friends. Because friends take you, but they don't bring you back. And not everyone is considered a friend. Some people are just acquaintances. When you think about what are friends for, and you think about some people that you consider as friends, and how much of a friend they have been to you, and whether your friend is helping you or harming or hurting you. Those are important questions. The Bible tells us about a true friendship between Jonathan and David in 1 Samuel 18, verse 1 to 4. 1 Samuel 19, verses 1 to 2, also verse 4 and verse 7. And the fact that they loved each other. And this was no funny relationship. This was not some fleshly relationship between Jonathan and David. You know, when we talk about love for each other, we sometimes have a problem when true love is demonstrated. Do you know, church, when true love is demonstrated, we question it? If you keep loving your children, your husband, your wife, your family members who have offended and hurt you over and over again, you keep loving and forgiving them, sometimes there are people who question your love. Amen? You all with me? They say, you're stupid. You are silly. But isn't that what true love is? is all about. The Bible tells us in Romans 5 and verse 8, but God commended his love towards us in that while we were what? While we were what? Sinners. So we have all been there. Amen? And what did God do? Loved us still. In John chapter 15 and verse 13, we are told Jesus himself, the Bible tells us greater love for greater love had no man. That a man lay down his life for his friends. You need to question who are your friends and whether your friends are helping or hurting, but you also need to look for proof, evidence as to who your real friends are. Secondly and quickly, we must prove our own selves. Let us turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 quickly and then we're going to be done. Just bear with me. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 13 and verse 5 we are told, examine yourselves. And when the Bible says to examine yourself, church, this is personal. This is not talking about my neighbor. This is not talking about another brother or sister. This is talking about me. That I must examine and search myself to see whether I'm in the faith. And being in the faith is not just coming on Sunday morning and Wednesday nights. It is more than that. It is not just giving on Sunday mornings. It is more than that. Prove your own selves, knowing not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. We must prove ourselves. And how do I prove myself? Let me give you a quick test. One, 
Check your anger. Are you easily angered? Do you have a temper? Check your patience. Self-control. Your desire to do good over evil. Your desire for the things of God over the things of self. Whether you are a fair and reasonable person. Whether you are thankful. And if we are thankful, we should find ways to show it, but also to see it. And it is not that we are not thankful, you know. It's just that very often we do not say that we are thankful, especially to our spouse. Very often we take our spouse for granted. We love them, yes. We are thankful for the meal, yes. We are thankful for the relationship, yes. But sometimes we don't say it, neither do we show it. I want to close. I want to ask you in closing, are you like the queen of Sheba who didn't just hear but wanted to know, was curious, wanted proof? Are you indifferent? You don't care if there's proof or not. Do you always seek proof? Do you seek proof? When you are about to repeat something that someone told you, do you really seek proof? Do you really have the evidence for what you are about to say? Or is it just something that you heard? If you are about to act, do you have proof? And very often, we do have the proof. Very often when we are about to do something or to think something or to say something, don't we have the proof that it is wrong? Amen? Don't we? We know that it is wrong. Amen? But even though we have the proof, we still do. How many things have we said even though we have the proof that it is wrong, but we still say it. Amen? And you can't say amen. Amen? means that you agree with me. Having a little evidence is not a bad thing. Do you have proof for what you believe? And what we believe, the proof is here in the word of God and you can't say amen. Finally, God's word and life's experiences gives us a lot of proof on a daily basis. God's word tells us how we ought to live. Life's daily experiences too because sometimes as Christians we do things that are contrary to the word of God and we suffer for it. Amen? We do. Are you like the queen? of Sheba. Are you seeking proof? And if you have the proof, when there's a choice between good and evil, what do you choose? We want to extend the Lord's invitation to you this morning. Perhaps you've been speaking, you've been acting, believing, but there's no proof. I want to ask you to begin today to seek proof. Just like the queen or Sheba did. I want to thank you for listening. May God continue to bless every one of us as we strive to do his will. Amen.
for the lesson and Allison y'all being with us today it's a blessing to have you been almost too long to, since it's been since they've been here but uh, we remember some trips with them down there Steve I know and others that have been to Nevis and maybe a soon trip uh, again as the uh, building comes to fruition down there and the building's not everything but it is important to make a good image for God wherever we are and sometimes uh, a few sticks and stones don't didn't go too uh, not a bad idea, so to speak, to promote God's word and, and our existence in a place and gives them a good presence in making that come along as well as their Christian lives, of course. Uh, Brother Cumberbatch, you know, when I started working with him, I always try to remember his name. It was a little hard at first, but then I came up with a hook, you know. Cumber sounded like cucumber and batch sounded like patch, you know. So cucumber patch and cumberbatch, it worked, worked out pretty good. So uh, sometimes you can find a way to, to get those. Of course, Rosenblum, he had to work on that a little bit too, I'm sure. So uh, had it going both ways. 249 will be our closing song this morning. 249, uh, we'll have the... Um, First and last stanza, again, as he was reminded this morning about the proving of our lives according to God's Word, and this talks about the precious book that we need to pattern ourselves after. We'll have a closing prayer after the first and last stanzas, and again, uh, come back tonight if you possibly can, 5 o'clock services. <clears throat> How precious is a book of mine, by Gracious and loving Father, we're so very thankful for this opportunity we've had to be together. Father, we are thankful for Brother Cumberbatch and his family, and we pray your blessings upon them as they engage in their continued work. Father, we pray that you'll be with all of our missionaries and help them and 
their proclamation of your word, taking the truth to the lost. And Father, we pray that you'll also help us as we put into practice those things that Brother Cumberbatch shared with us in his message, as we certainly do look at the proof of all the things we believe and can give the answer to those reasons that we believe as we do. And Father, we pray that you'll help us also, as he also mentioned, as we have that love and also that we have the self-examination that as we consider our endeavors and activities from day to day that you'll help us to make those sound decisions that are right in your sight. Father, we pray now that you'll be with us as we leave and that you'll bring all of us back who are able this evening again as we seek to worship you and live in accordance to your will. These blessings we ask and we thank you in all things we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>